Right, it's Thursday morning now and we're full of enthusiasm. Yeah, we're full of enthusiasm, okay? Right, um, as you know, last weekend we was at the Newark Tractor Vintage Heritage Show. So here's a video of bits and pieces of tractors that I walked around and I kind of liked and looked at. So uh, if you don't like tractors, this isn't the video for you. If you do like tractors, have a look and see what you think. There's an amazing sea of 135 tractor here at Newark. And I think probably you need every variation you could probably think of. Um, absolutely amazing. I don't know how many of these tractors were made, but if you do know, put in the opposite below. It would be good to know. But anyway, walking across here, this is the one that caught my eye. This is a come from Kent, where I come from. This is, I think, 1970. And it was supplied by a firm called Lenfields, who I think my first father-in-law, Roger, used to work for Lenfields doing massive tractors and but this one's actually got quite a journey this, this one's still having a journey and uh, this one's been on a travel all around the UK with its shepherd's hut with this guy called Steve this is Steve and this is Steve 135 so tell us a little bit about it Steve uh, what can I say if you don't go wrong <laughs> so you just keep going so yep. 1970 yeah yeah um, and it's an, as you, isn't it, it can, it's a fruit tractor. Fruit tractor, It's got exhaust. downswept exhaust, which you don't see many of them, do you? No. Like that. I think there's only one or two here today. Out of all this lot, there's only a couple here. Yeah. And where have you, how far have you been with it? I left Brands Hatch in Kent and went to Cardiff via Gloucester, down the other side, Cardiff, right, right through Wales, skirted around Liverpool, went to see Tom Pemberton <laughs> at Blackpool. Did you get free ice cream? Yeah. 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 <laughs> and lots of goodies there you give me. I've never seen Blackpool Tower, so I parked her under the tower and took a picture of the tower behind her. Oh, wow. Left here, up to Edinburgh, down, back down out the country, down the east coast, this side, back through over Tower Bridge in London, took her back to London. So wow. she's done Cardiff, Edinburgh and London, three cities. There you go. And just, it, it, just shy 2,000 miles. In Steve's homemade shepherd's hut there. But what a little tractor that must be, do that. Super reliable. My new modern tractors aren't as reliable as that, and that is a dead cert. So, uh, if you do see Steve on his travels, give him a wave. Put your thumb up. I'll give <laughs> well, you a check back. There we go, right, we're going to find some more. What an amazing story there that uh, Steve, they're going around the UK, but there's a whole scene. It's, what's nice is some of these tractors here are in their original condition. So, I, would, I prefer them with the shelf, the sh with the shelf enders there. Um, I think it's from my youth of being on the fruit farms, but I think it's every variation of 135 you'd almost have here. G Ridge, look at that, that might be a 1968 tractor, 67 tractor, thereabouts. Cabbed. The industrial version, which is MF20. I think they got, they got a different, or twin braking system on those, or a different braking system. But. So it looks like there's any vineyard versions here. Yeah, there's a there's a narrow version. Again from Lenfields. And they say I think Lenfields used to buy in the standard version and change the trumpet housings on the back. Here. To make them into uh, they would change these bits on here. My mic's file noise tell me about that. They would do that to make them into the narrow version. I think, hmm, it's like going back in time for me here. Very nostalgic. So, all these variations here. Four wheel drive 135, don't see that many of those at all. Yeah, not many of them at all. What a selection. I think it's amazing to see all these tractors here, and, and, and particularly for the age of them. You know, you won't see any of the tractors that we run in our hire fleet today still around in 60, 50, 60 years time at all. I'm sure you won't. So this is an amazing selection. I think this is the Guinness World Records they're trying to achieve for the most run three fives all in one place. So. Uh, Hopefully they've achieved it again, a deregistration.
I think the early ones had red wheels there as opposed to silver wheels. They also did, I haven't seen any here, a petrol version. Um, I haven't seen, oh, there's another, there's another narrow one. What a lovely, again, the downward exhaust. That's the later one with longer, or the later ones had longer four button straight axles. But, nice tractor. I think you'll be an awful long time, if ever, you will see that amount of 135s all in one place. This is an absolutely fantastic turnout. And there's another one, there's another one, I'm, I'm, a totally sort of unmolested one with, with a the roll bar on it, a late one, because the early ones had oil bath air cleaners. There you go. Michael's lesson on 135s here, had oil bath air cleaners. And the later ones had air, air, air filter. There you go. If I was judging at the Newark show, Massey Ferguson tractors, I think one of the stars for me that I like, purely I think because of my youth when we were in Kent, with the fruit orchards in the house, would be this 135. Um, it's very smart. Not many, don't see many of them around like you used to. Here we have a, almost a concourse, uh, a concourse condition. Matthew Ferguson 135, Mark 3. And the difference of it being the width of it, it is extremely narrow. Very, very narrow indeed. The rear link arms, as you can see, they were cranked. The mud guards are pushed right in against the seat. And I've got cutouts there which allow the arms to come up and down. Cranked front axle. They're cranked out to have steering. The only thing that I do find quite strange with this tractor, the fact that the, very, the, never, the narrow ones are like the fruit orchards. Yet with this one you have like the, what they call the shell fenders, which allow the fruit, the branches to go over the top. This one's actually got an upright exhaust, which is quite, in my opinion, it's quite unusual and a lot of the time they would have a downward exhaust and um, that way, but... <laughs> Strangely enough, whoever did judge the Massey 135s has judged this as the winner. So there you go, it's a great mind, must speak alike. But I certainly do think the exhaust on that, in theory, should be a downward exhaust, but... The, in my, that's only my opinion though. I'm having, I've been having a wonderful day here really looking at all these uh, tractors and variations of tractors. Yeah. It's um, great to see so many of them being preserved as well, kept for the future generations. So uh, that's uh, good to see. This is rather sweet. Paul and Dexter Vineyard. Don't see many of them. Obviously been imported. Uh, imagine about 1959, maybe 60. I bet you might say actually on it. What does it say? Oh, 1963. Strange because the headlights on the on the uh, later ones are in the grill. But there you go. Um, so it's still 37, 58, 57, 8 years old. They normally rust out on the corners here. But I'm guessing in the climate where she's been, she's um. Kept it well preserved, and there you go. How nice is that? And then, if you're into counties, a few of them here as well. But even this little tractor here caught my eye when we were judging early on. That 1980s, she's 18, 32, 42 years old. All right, yeah, 42, 42 years old. And again, in very, very good, clean, tidy order. Another Dexter, 4000s. A whole marquee here full of uh, blue tractors, if you're into blue tractors. And uh, there's some county quarters up here, which I thought was quite cool. 
four three thousands. Another Dexter. Not sure the wing wheel is quite standard on that, but there we go. And there's some county crawlers. And the variation of, the, of a Fulton Super Major. So, that's the Super Major one. Isn't it nice, nice to see them all being preserved. Part of my journey on YouTube, okay, we get messaged by people around the world. And a couple of three weeks ago, I got messaged by a gentleman who said he was coming over to the tractor show from Canada, Manitoba to be precise, and like to say hello. Anyway, this is Michael from Manitoba in Canada. Yep. And he's come. You haven't just come just for the track show. You've come. Oh, no, no, no. We've come on holiday, but uh, this is one of the major things I wanted to do. Uh, it's been a really good show. It is a great show. But no, he's bought me a gift, right? Now, <laughs> it's one of Michael's own number plates. Because in Canada, you can definitely to do here. This is one of Michael's own number plates. So. He brought that over as a gift, all the way from Canada. So I'm deeply touched that someone's gone to that trouble. So it's really kind, and I mean that. So this is gonna go in a private place, probably in our meeting room or somewhere. And now someone else is getting the camera out <laughs> to film the filming now. <laughs> so what's your best part of the show then? I think just seeing the variation of uh, the tractors and, okay. and the spares. Okay. something we've not really got over there. We, you want to find something yes. for an old um, refurbishment for a tractor or something. Okay. We haven't got that. Okay. Uh, That's good. It's, good. it's good to see what's here. Anyway, one question I'll start to people. Who else you watch on YouTube? Well, I watch Holly Blog and uh, Andrew Ward. That's good. Uh, know, there's quite a few actually. That's nice. So even in Canada, people follow us. So welcome to that. Anyway, thank you for my gift, Michael, and thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Thank you very much. Means a lot. Thank you. There we go. Day two at Newark. We're back, and uh, looking around some of the stands here, we just come across this um, a toy model, whatever you want to call them, stand. I don't know which, the correct terminology, but the guy here makes these models. And I'm going to show you them now. All right. So on Martin's farm model stand, and there, I'll show you these first. There's a huge array. Of models here. <laughs> I think the staff, they're all hiding here behind the models at the back there now, so there we go. Anyway, but look at this, this is David Brown 1190. Now I grew up driving at 1190 about years ago. Look at that, that is absolutely fantastic little model and it actually makes it. So there's Martin, <laughs> they're going to now, put you on YouTube. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic, you actually manufacture. Oh, I convert and converge and, and, and do patterns as well, yeah, I do. Oh, I think it's yeah. absolutely amazing and a credit to you. Brilliant. That's fine, thank you. Brilliant. So, uh, you got, where's your web, what's your website? Or? Uh, I'm on YouTube. On, uh, sorry, I'm on eBay. eBay shop. Uh, Martin's Farm Models on eBay. Martin's Farm Models yeah. on eBay. So, there you go. Yeah. Go and check these things out. I can, yeah. Awesome. There we go. Right, job done. I'm in some of the, one of the halls here at uh, Newark. And everywhere you look here, there's tractors and all different variations of tractors. Um, but something I just found here I quite like actually, quite different. Intestral B275 um, tractor with a steerage show on the front. My immediate thought was someone sits on there and steers, or someone drives, like they used to have when they had the rear mount ones. This actually has got a like a conversion kit, so the clutch pedal there is actually connected to the clutch pedal there. The gear linkage. Yes, you connected to that gear linkage, so that's actually quite cool. Um, I was truly expecting that you had the man there steering and the man there driving, but it's not. So, uh, this is progressive farming of probably the 60s, or something like that, anyway. I quite like that. I've actually just read the paperwork after that, well, about it there. Apparently, this is only one of three, and it was imported from Belgium. So actually, I actually found that actually received runner up. So, if somebody else liked it as well. So, uh, the judge of that one, I think, made a good choice of that. That's something very different. Very different indeed. I think we're here now with David Browns, 1390. And here's the baby of the range, 1190. 
Now, when we were back at Martin's Farm Models just now, this is the tractor that he had in that um, plastic case. Full check horsepower. And when you think now, you get compact tractors almost now with more horsepower. Yeah. David Brown for 1190. It was, a, it was a very small engine really, but had a very, very nice cab on it. So, uh, over the farm drums used to have one of those. I've had, I've had quite a few 1390s and 1490s. And I've never actually owned an 1190. It's good to see the level of detail and expertise that goes into uh, even the radio control um, models here. Incredible. I think there should be some here with some GCS stickers on, really, but. Uh, Link it to Radio Control Traffic Club, there we go. So who said electric vehicles wouldn't catch on in earth moving? You are very wrong. Attention to detail is crazy. No ad blue issues on any of these, that's for sure. Just found the Unimogs. Nice MB track there. The Unimog. And then Unimog, very similar to mine at home, except mine at home is nowhere near the condition of this one. But this one's a very super tiny, super tidy example with the three point inkage. Nice thing, very nice thing. Tractor pulling section, and here we have the sledgehammer. I'm not even sure what tractor is underneath there, I have no idea. It certainly looks uh, some sort of a beast. Looks like a North Rock next to it. Various other. It's a very nice messy. Another tractor puller there. I think if you come down here, we've got the baby of tractor pullers. This one's called Hello Chicken Nugget. There you go. So this is what I think I've got to look out for for Dan for delivering traders. I think he would quite like that. If we pimped it up a little bit with some lights, paint it in a nice colour, maybe some air horns, so uh, and Dan can go move, moving stuff around the UK with that. So uh, if we don't get him a sleeper cab, he won't be able to stop asleep. So that's probably a bonus point there, isn't it? But that's a nice tidy example of a, a Unimog, that's for sure. I'll tell you every day's a school day, and I didn't know that apparently Sammy took the first production four-wheel drive tractors and uh, this is one of them very clean example built in 1957 to 1960 so uh, nice to see it being preserved Doe Triple D it's in number four 100 horsepower four-wheel drive in its day there was nothing it was a Two tractors effectively joined together. There we go. What a, what a piece of engineering from Ernest Owens in Essex. And, uh, years ago, people used to cut them up and make them back into uh, forcing major tractors and four to five thousand tractors and they export them. That's what Ford and Dexter. When you look at the one we looked at in the um, Ford 
associations, the, the, the import one, I said they've rushed on a corner. This one's a fucking example where it's actually been, uh, you can see there, it's been filled. Quite a common thing on decks, not quite why, but it's a very common thing that they all rust out there. But it's a very nice example. Super Dexter there, in mint condition. Yeah, again, a very, very nice tractor. I'm not quite sure if I like the painted blue exhaust though. I'm not sure that's, um, if that's only my opinion. But, uh, part of that, a very, very tidy, nice example. You know, example there of a uh, Ferguson Tibbin trailer. And the early ones, you've got the drop down tail board, but you'd have to lift out sides, which is quite a, um, this is a very nice example of that. And again, the very early ones actually had, I think, I think 12 stud wheels as opposed to six. Um, very tidy example. Be, you'd be scared to use it though, wouldn't you, really? But uh, cool. Next one, I shall go to 75. My first employer, when I worked on the farm, for, I worked for a contractor for a couple of years leaving school. And just as I joined them, they, they had a road to 75. Which I think is a Ford 5000 underneath. Um, to me, this was a big tractor, big, big tractor in its time when I drove that. And uh, cab comfort was uh, exactly what you see. But I didn't care less because I just wanted to, all I wanted to do was drive tractors. So this was, to me, this was still how lucky I was to be able to drive it. And I was paid to drive it. It was almost like. How cool was that? Another tractor we had on the farm was a Mark 1 595. Two wheel drive. Probably similar to that. Do you know, the one we had was an R registration, so this could even be the same tractor. I've got no idea what the registration was of that one at the time. Um, this one had a Q cab. So we had the, the luxury of a heater. And uh, that was a big thing, big thing this time. Two wheel drive, only 30k, so, but big tractor, and, and it was like heaven's right. It had a hedge cutter on it for a fair bit of the time. Um, come round. So, this is shed is just full of tractors. If you like tractors, this is a pretty much which way do you turn? And that's a beast, a massive 1250, the original. Spent his life working at a power station. It's actually a massive 1250, not the not the 1200, which is a lot more, uh, a lot more than around. This is actually the 1250, so it's like a power station, unrestored, and it's got very very low hours. I think it's well secured. There, you're not meant to get in the camera. This one, are you? Look at that, it's chained up. That one, lovely example. I say, I like I like the door lock. I think that's very secure. <laughs> Nothing to do with factory brewing Newark. Yeah. Just look at this tractor. I've got it wrong actually by the way, it's done 2,300 hours, not 3,000. But I don't think it's ever done any agricultural work and I think they got, the gentleman that owns it was telling that linkage on it was almost like seized up when it was, um, it never done any three-point linkage work. But lovely example, nice to see it in an unrestored, unmolested way. But what a tractor, I'm sure you see it out about because it is actually quite a um, very unique. You won't see many white 1250s around. So if you do see it out and about, go and have a chat with the guy that owns it because he's um, he's really passionate about it and uh, will tell you all about it. So uh, another little gem here at Newark. Here's a Fergie equivalent of the Dexter that we saw earlier on. The Vineyard Nemo. I've actually got a picture of one of our, my great uncle's lorries loaded with these where they've been converted. And they're all parked sideways on the lorry, across the lorry, I'll try and get a video out, but that's the, the Fergie equivalent of an early vineyard fruit tractor. In a very well preserved state as well. This is Stuart and Vicky, there we go. And this is the tattoo on her arm. Look at that. I say look at that a lot, I get told off for it by the way. But that is, but what made you have that tattoo then? Uh, my dad had a heart attack and we nearly lost him two days before my birthday. Right. So whilst he was in hospital, 
I went off and got that one. That's quite sweet. Yeah, it's very sweet, yeah, it? it is. Yeah. Well, I think that's very oh, unique. Yeah, so that's for Dad. And the business bit is for... <laughs> Yeah, that's another fellow that's YouTuber. All he says it. All right, he says it. all right. I think that's a yeah, very good. Uh, well done for that. Ten out of ten. Actually, somebody's pride and joy here. A collection of uh, Massey tractors, combines. Wow, what a collection of tractors there. And uh, how beautifully presented as well. So yeah, that's nice to see. Collection here of all the different variations of like one three fives and MF twenties and what a great collection. Well, thank you for watching my video on tractors. Sorry, it's a long run. Um, I'm quite passionate about looking around them, so sorry about that. Hey, feeling seventy five percent today here probably. Um, hope you're feeling good. Hope you're all well. And uh, we look forward to seeing the next video. So thanks for watching. And please, if you haven't done so, and you made it this far in the video, if you liked it, please press click and subscribe. Thank you. That makes sense, does it? Please press click and subscribe. Please press the subscribe button. Thank you. Jobs are good. Thank you.